and I just think that I don't ever need to cook tiramisu. When am I gonna need to cook tiramisu? Am I gonna be a chef? No. The whole thing. Just dump it on, I'm serious. Okay. <laughs> and now it looks professional. That's really impressive. Beautifully done. I think we're gonna get an A. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week, thanks to a sponsorship from Philips Espresso, we're taking a look at the tiramisu from Superbad, which I was very relieved to see involved making ladyfingers from scratch, because the store-bought ones are kind of a mixed bag that can range from not very good to absolutely horrifying. So it's time to saddle up and get to making some ladyfingers using a very innovative method from Gemma Stafford. Into the bowl of a stand mixer goes three large egg yolks that we're going to whisk together with about a quarter cup of sugar. We got about a half cup here, so I'm going to add about half, save the other half for the other half of this recipe. We're gonna whisk this gun half speed until it's about halfway where we want it to be, sorry I'll stop, which is pale and yellow and starting to turn ribbony, about two minutes. At which point with the mixer running we're gonna add about a half teaspoon of extract. You can go vanilla or almond or whatever kind of flavor you want to make your ladyfingers. Set that mixture aside and then into another bowl set in a stand mixer we're going to whisk four egg whites. Do this on medium speed until they start getting light and foamy and then we're going to slowly stream in the remaining quarter cup of sugar. Continue beating this for two to three minutes until it holds stiff peaks. This is essentially exactly the same way that you'd make a basic meringue. But what sets this apart from meringue is the richness of the egg yolks, which we are now going to add back, gently folding together until almost combined but still streaky, and adding one cup or about four and a half ounces of all-purpose flour sifted to prevent lumps. Then finally we're just going to gently fold this together until it's homogenous, taking care not to knock all the air out of the batter that we, or rather our stand mixer, worked so hard to get in there. And now for the part that we saw them do in the movie, we're going to pipe our lady fingers using a piping bag. Or you could use a Ziploc bag with the corner cut off if you're in dire need of lady fingers and just do not have time to go to the store. Now you'll notice that I'm making my first batch of lady fingers quite small. And there's a very, very good reason for this. I thought that they would puff up more in the oven. But these will be nice for a garnish or just a snack on. So onto a parchment lined baking sheet go some considerably larger ladyfingers, which we're baking at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 14 minutes rotating once during baking, until they're light and crisp and golden brown. Then once they've fully cooled you can peel them gently off the parchment paper. And these might not be as pretty or perfect as the ones from the store, but they taste orders of magnitude better. And they go particularly well with coffee. Anyway, on the subject of coffee, we're going to try one of those mid-roll ads that are so popular on YouTube. YouTube nowadays, which means I get to say something I've always wanted to say. Stick around, we'll be right back after these messages. Morning routine? There's nothing routine about my morning. Not with my Philips espresso machine with Latte Go, and it's five barista-style beverages available with the push of a button. So I've got a little more time to kick my feet up and feel the dawn's energy spill over the fresh canvas of a new day. Can your coffee machine do that? I very much doubt it. All right, and we're back where we're now getting into the custard of our tiramisu. This is going to start off as a very similar process to making ladyfingers in the bowl of a stand mixer. We're beating together four egg yolks and a quarter cup of sugar. Maybe a bit longer this time though, three minutes on medium high speed until tripled in volume. Set that aside, clean off your whisk attachment, and get a fresh bowl in which we will be beating three quarters of a cup of heavy cream and a quarter cup of sugar into whipped cream. This shouldn't take more than a minute or two on medium high speed. We just want to hit medium peaks, or as I like to call them, floppy peaks. Then to the whipped cream we're adding eight ounces of room temperature mascarpone cheese which is like an Italian cream cheese that has a higher fat content. Just beat this for 30 seconds to one minute until it's nice and thick and spreadable. Then to this mixture we're going to add our egg yolk mixture from before and our custard is complete. You might have noticed that like homemade mayonnaise or ice cream this contains raw eggs so make sure you're using eggs that you trust. Then the last element of this dessert is one cup of very strong coffee ideally espresso. I've got a whole lot to make here so why don't we take a another quick commercial break. Even when you're a man fueled by ideas and responsibility, sometimes it can feel like you're running on empty. Walk by my office and it won't be long till you smell the sultry aroma of pure Arabica coffee beans and hear the gentle purr of a ceramic grinder good for 20,000 cups. Philips Espresso Machine with Latte Go. Life can be a grind, so you're gonna need some coffee. 
All right, and we are back where it is finally time to assemble our tiramisu. Now I've only got this really small spring form mold handy, so it's gonna be a taller, narrower version of the one we see in the movie, which I'm fine with. It's gonna look like a little tiramisu crown. So I spread just a little bit of custard in the bottom of the ring mold, and in the movie it looked like they were making tiramisu in the form of a charlotte cake, which has a ring of lady fingers on the outside. So we're lining the rim of our spring form pan with lady fingers rounded side out, and then it's time for the fun part, the layering. I've got some smaller lady fingers here that I'm gonna use to create layers, and these are going to get a very brief dunk in our cooled espresso, which I'm going to mix with a little splash of dark rum. This is optional, but this or some amaretto helps evoke that really traditional Italian flavor. Then we're just going to try to arrange as many of these as possible in a single layer lined up in the bottom of the pan. Do not be afraid to cut up your lady fingers to fill in any uncomfortable gaps. Then we're adding just enough custard to cover the coffee-soaked lady fingers, and then rinsing and repeating until the mold is nearly filled to the top. And then we just need to cover and refrigerate for at least four hours and up to 24 until it's nice and firm. Now there are much simpler and easier ways to make tiramisu, ones that don't take hours of careful preparation, but nothing quite beats the feeling of accomplishment. No, 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 no! Oh my god, oh my god, it's the sum of all my fears. I don't know what happened. Cut cut the cameras, cut the commercial. And we'll be Philip's latte, oh, you and me. Philip's latte, go. All right, so as it turns out, I arranged my springform pan upside down, which I'm sure happens all the time to people with their own cooking show. So that means I had to do it all over again. It's bummed me out to watch this. We rented this really expensive camera. Can we use that? Oh, yeah. That's better. Maybe we can switch over to that 80s anthem as well. That's the stuff. This is doing it for me. Gonna forget all my tiramisu worries with a little help from these vintage anamorphic lenses. 14 stops of dynamic range and a super 35mm sensor. And there's the chocolate that I forgot to dust on. Which is odd when you think about it because Jonah Hill made a kind of a huge point about covering the thing with chocolate. Anyway, I digress. This is going into the fridge for 4 hours and up to 24. Enough time to get it to hold its own shape and become sliceable. This would definitely be prettier with store-bought ladyfingers, but I don't care. In my mind, it's my crowning achievement. Because it looks like a crown. And look at all those beautiful layers of ladyfingers, all soaked in coffee and nestled in custard and just waiting to be eaten by my mouth. This might look a little better served than its side here. Whatever, I've put like eight hours into tiramisu today, so let's dig in. And this hopefully doesn't come as a surprise, but this is totally delicious. The custard is rich and flavorful from the egg yolks and the mascarpone. The ladyfingers are light and delicate. And I can tell you something that this is going to go great with coffee. So this seems like the right moment to thank Phillips for sponsoring this episode and letting us have a good time with how we show off their amazing machine. Hang on, I'll see you in 235. There we go. It's got an automatic milk frother with only two parts that can go in the dishwasher. You can adjust things like the coffee's strength, the amount of coffee, and the amount of milk foam with the push of a button. And most amazingly, it makes lattes and cappuccinos and Americanos and espressos with the push of a button. With that said, we'll see you next time here on Binging with Babish. Until then, keep your coffee hot your spirit hotter, and head to philips.com slash espresso to get your espresso machine with Latte Go today. The link, as always, is in the video description below.
Yeah, 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 yeah